And welcome, everybody, to another week in the teacher's room at ITDI, the International Teacher Development Institute. We've got a great group of people here, a lot of friends and good people. And tonight, hey, there's Anne. And tonight, we, um, we're lucky to have um, uh, two special guests, and we're changing the format. You know, some of the regulars know that uh, I've done some teacher interviews, but we're actually going to interview two colleagues who got together and collaborated on a, an article that got published, which is called Eliciting Student Voice. I haven't crossed it out. I'm just <laughs> a whole Cross bunch of stuff. You know, so I've got all kinds of questions. I'm very excited to get into this. And as a bonus, are we allowed to share this uh, at the end, Andy, or is it, uh, is it still offline? What's that? Are we able to the share article. the article with everyone? Uh, the article is actually in the paid journal, so. Oh, well, it's not. Okay. Okay. But we can share a link to the journal. You can share a link to the journal. That's yeah. what I want to know. Good enough. Okay. So, um, with that, uh, I'm Phil, I'm just a little bit worried uh, if we're actually going to be recording everybody. Will they be on this, or will it just be my video? Have you recorded... To the cloud or to, yeah, the... to the cloud? Okay, and then what view do you have on? I have um, uh, all six of us right now, and it says so speaker I... view up at the top. Right, and it, well, so it depends I'm actually, what. I'm actually in the gallery view then. Right, it depends what the setting was on the cloud, but I say just run with it. Hopefully, it'd be all right. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> How about with uh, two of us, two, two uh, authors, um, I'll try to uh, direct questions to Chiyuki or, or Andy, but um, if, you're, if you're not feeling uh, ready to answer, why not just jump in and cover each other, okay? Okay. All right. So uh, we'll start basically with the genesis. Whose idea was this eliciting student voice? Whose idea to do this article? And Idea. Idea. Okay. Um, I had I had the idea. Um, I was just thinking, what would happen if we asked our students one question? Uh -huh. I think that was the genesis of it. So, in the middle of a course, or maybe three or four weeks in, or what have you, if we just uh, you know asked the question, if you could tell us anything right now about the class how you're feeling, you just keep it as open as possible. I wonder what kind of information students would give. Now, was that a question that has been kicking around your brain for a while, or was there some kind of catalyst that made that happen? Do you remember at all? I don't remember where, where the idea came from. I, I think I was teaching one day and I just thought, you know, I teach the class, I go in and I, I've got a lot to cover. I say goodbye to the students, but I never actually ask them, you know, what, you know, how, how, how do you feel? Yeah, yeah. So wouldn't it be interesting just to have this one open question? So the title of your article is Eliciting Student Voice. And I didn't really know that student voice is an actual area of study. Um, as you've quoted St. John and Brielle 2017. Uh, I'll just read it to save you time. But student voice can be described as the expression of values, opinions, beliefs, and perspectives of individuals and groups of students. Mm -hmm. So when you got into this, did you guys know that this was an actual area of study or was it new to you, Chiyuki? Well, it was, uh, I knew from, my, I think um, it was a um, master's course at Aston. We yeah. often talk about very student-centered, you know, researchers. And then we've often, well, actually actual researchers, like li mm. listening to a student bosses. So yeah, I got the idea. And then I always wonder, and I often ask students, but um, probably I thought this would be a really good idea to ask the student and one question. And so you're, when Andy proposed this idea, now why not do it just by yourself, Andy? What was the uh, impetus to drag Chiyuki into your <laughs> master plan? Just, good just question. 
just to go back to the question about student voice, I used yeah. to work with a guy called Simon Stevens, and he collected a lot of data on, po we've just been talking about poster sessions, and he collected all of the data, and, and he, I think our paper we, we got published together was called like student voice. How did they feel about the process of doing projects and doing poster sessions at the end? So I've lived with this idea of student voice from, from Mr. Stevens, who I've known for many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, Chuki and I have worked together before on, on several things, including conference organization. And um, to make it, my Japanese sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And to make it, to make it, you know, very user friendly for the students, so that they can elicit, we can elicit their voice in the L one in 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 their mother tongue. Yeah, I wanted it. I wanted it to be possible that they answer in Japanese. Yeah. Now, if I start to collect data, I've done this before, and I, I've you know, I've hired a student, but Chuki's working at a university. I'm working at a university. We can collect a lot of data together. We've worked well before together, and obviously Chuki speaks far better Japanese than I do. He sure does. Or yeah. English as well. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ouch. So, um, you you um, in your introduction you talked about the fact that in Japan uh, we administer. Uh, student surveys at the end of the term. Yes. And here's a little quiz question for you both. You've mentioned two limitations or two uh, bad points mm -hmm. about doing those uh, surveys at the end of the term. Go. Who's got one? I, I know both of them. Go, man, go. <laughs> do you know the answer? I do. I got them highlighted. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I, just, I read the paper just before I came on, so. <laughs> one of the one of the, one of the issues with the with the there were many issues with the institutional uh, yeah. survey. Yeah. One of the issues is that it works on a Likert scale, a Likert scale of five to one. So the only responses we get are numeric. Just a second, just to for everybody in the audience, the, I call it Likert. Might be my yeah. Canadian accent, Likert, but okay. the Likert is L I K E R T. The Likert scale, and that's so it goes like either uh, give your opinion five or four, three, two, one, or for example, I strongly agree, yeah. I agree, I slightly agree, I slightly disagree, you know, disagree strongly. Disagree. So that kind of scale, and what's the problem with that, Andy? Well, it doesn't. It, it's it's very quantitative, but it doesn't give you any any qualitative response. So often, I say to my students when we're doing the survey. There's a little section at the bottom to write your comment, mm. like a real response. Please do that because I will read it. And sometimes you, you'll get something like, I love you. Yeah, it was fun. Like, yeah. So, not much. Yeah, th there's not much of that qualitative response to our classes going on with the, with the institutional one. Yep. And the other problem you talked about is the timing yeah. of the uh, survey, yeah. Chuki. Yeah. It was a timing. It is always at the end. Yeah. We can't. Well, well, at the end of the first semester, spring semester, maybe we could work on it and we can reflect what we know from the students' opinion. But it's not still so often. So it's not, yeah, often enough. Yeah. It's not good enough. And the problem with that, you know, that often it's done at the end, so the students have finished the course. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like in football. Yeah. Um, you get a red card, so the, the the players banned for three three games, but that doesn't help. You know the the result. So if I take someone down in the penalty area, and I'm sent off, I, I'm banned for three games. It doesn't help. It doesn't help the game now. Right. So if we're doing. You know, if we want to change something, we need to know during the course. It needs to be, you know, formative, not summative. Yeah. And formative being kind of ongoing week to week and summative being at the end of the course, usually for evaluation uh, purposes. Uh, Phil, are you just waving at me or would you like to say something? Yeah, I was, I was just going to say also one other thing that uh, phenomena that some researchers have looked at is um, survey fatigue. So especially mm. in university context, basically they all students for all their courses, yeah. the 
answers these surveys at the end of exactly. term in the same week and yeah. you know eventually they're just like check the boxes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and also often it's, believe, yeah. right yeah and it, often it's they they will talk to their friends about stuff as well and then they agree and you know if they like a teacher then they may score them highly regardless of what the question actually says yeah. just to get through it yeah. so um whereas i think if you do things ongoing like you know every after completing a project like after four or five weeks and then the next project it's much more valuable as mm. and the yeah. of shit. good thank you so um you guys decided therefore you called it a bite-sized survey <laughs> right and uh, that has boone written all over it yeah <laughs> it wasn't me okay <laughs> is that actually a word or is that something you guys made up Chuki chose bite-sized Good, 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 good. Take a tiny okay. bit. Yeah, a bite yeah. size. Yeah. And so you've talked about facilitating one's reflective practice. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering, uh, good teachers reflect all the time. Is this, um, uh, is formalizing this, does it, did it feel like it was much more effective than just chatting with students at the end of class how did today go or did it feel meaningful well sometimes it's quite difficult to have time to even have a chat with the students well especially for my teaching context i'm a part-time teacher i have to come you know go here and then there and yep. then i'm not gonna be at one place so maybe um andy can do it but i have less opportunities yeah so this one was really good opportunity to know what they are talking about and then also maybe japanese japanese the students don't really you know tell me the truth or uh something they really feel unless it's anonymous so unless it's anonymous right yeah, right. And that's you, can also, you can also make mistakes with your reflection I mean, you might come out of the class going, oh, I thought that went really well. Your students really enjoyed it. And maybe they're thinking, God, that was the worst class I've ever been in. So unless you elicit their voice, your reflection is, you know, you're imposing your subjectivity onto, onto the external reality. Yeah. And uh, usually we have a good instinct for that, but, you know, we could be wrong. Sure. sure. I think one of the things that, that we got from this was, it was very illuminating when there was something there. Yeah. Like, oh, there's something wrong with my board work. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I didn't. I we'll didn't. get into that here. It's coming up on page yeah. two. Um, so you then going in in your article, you, we've just finished the introduction, just the issues I've brought up now, and then you go into data collection, mm -hmm. and you say you designed this bite-sized one question, and yeah. I'm going to read the question. Uh, what is one piece of advice or knowledge you would want your teacher to know? Yeah. Let's say it one more time. What is one piece of advice or knowledge you would want your teacher to know? Now, what I'm most curious about is which kinds of questions ended up on the editing floor? Can you remember what, what you might have uh, tried to ask in the first place? I think that was it. I think that was the one we went with. Right from the start. It was translated into Japanese. Mm. Well, what's the Japanese, Juki? What was the Japanese? Dai Tai. Uh something you want them to know yeah. about the class. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And did you, did you guys, uh, and it says to encourage their uh, immediate and genuine responses, the question was translated into Japanese. Yes. I have no problem with doing that because it, to me, is the most obvious thing to do. But was there any wondering about whether you should do it in Japanese or English? Um, yeah. Andy. Um, well, not really. I think I think the point in the article there is that, you know, as I said, my, my Japanese isn't so wonderful. Um, so I would need help with that. So if I was doing, when I've done previous research, I've done it in English. Yeah. Well, that's due to my own, you know, failings in Japanese. But um, I have done research before where it has been in Japanese because I think it's easier for them to communicate 
what they want to say. Um, you know, some people, I, devil's advocate, some people will say, you're teaching an English class, you should give them this English experience and force them to uh, write their answers in English, which, by the way, I disagree with 100%. But, but um, did you guys think about it or was it just uh, the, the right thing? It depends on the nature of the activity. Yeah. For example, in, in my classes on Monday, I teach a three hour class. Yeah. So I've got much more time to play with and I get them to reflect on their learning experience at the end of the class for the last 10 minutes of, in their notebook, which will be assessed. Yeah. Of course, that is then going to be an English exercise. But the idea of this data collection is it's going to be done outside of the classroom or it's going to be done two minutes at the end of class. Yeah. Um, so um, we, we don't want to inhibit the students with, with, with a, a quick response. Sure. Suki, did Andy say everything on that? Yeah, and, uh, depending on the student's level as well. If mm -hmm. they are, most of my students are freshmen. And then they, their level is fairly lower or in the middle. But mm -hmm. um, some of them, want, if they want to say something, I really want them that language shouldn't be a barrier. Right. To express Perfect. themselves. So I thought either way, you can, you can answer us in English or Japanese, whatever you feel comfortable with. And Sorry. Yeah, the purpose was at least that real, authentic responses. So, yeah. yeah and I think, I mean, the, the Dornier's, Dornier, the motivational master, is all over this, you know, talking about uh, by, by asking them or giving the option to do it in Japanese, you're telling them, I really care what you yeah. think. I really want to know what you think. Yeah. And therefore, I'm not putting any obstacle in front of you versus the reaction of, oh, God, I got to do this in English. I can't do this in English. Yeah. It's just, to me, a 180 degrees difference in how you approach the yeah. survey. So some of the responses, I was really surprised because there are some things like criticizing yeah. how to teach. And then it's quite authentic. I thought it was like, wow, this is really yeah. great. Yeah. Good. So you said that you actually, in delivering it, you, you gave them the option of online or paper survey, which is great. Yeah. And then you asked them to complete it in the last five minutes of the class. Yeah. And my immediate reaction is, do you think uh, it fits in with Phil's fatigue syndrome? Do you think at the start or the middle of the class might have generated any different options? I might, in, uh, off the top of my head, I might do it in the middle of the class as a transition between a couple of activities because I, I, I see them, I see me fading at the end of the class or if it's near lunchtime or, you know, whatever. What do you think? And in retrospect, was that the right choice? I thought it was because of the, there is a little flow in the class and yep. I didn't really want to cut the flow. So, but if there are like two activities, for example, separated activities, probably I could throw that stuff in there. But when I did that um, survey, it was a little certain flow of the classroom, so I didn't want to stop it. Hmm. But anything, yeah. Andy? Um, I did it. I did it a little bit differently because with a lot of my classes at university, I have Facebook groups or line groups, so. I, um, we used the electronic survey monkey and I just put a, a link in and then students did it actually, I think they did it outside of class. Okay. Or maybe okay. I just need a little bit of time to do it at the end. I can't remember now, yeah, yeah, but sure. I remember putting the links in the Facebook group. Yeah. Did, you get, any, uh, yeah, did you get any feedback on your students about how they like survey monkey at all? Cause I remember asking my own students and, they came back and surprised me because some of them said, oh, we really like doing the Survey Monkeys. Can we have another one? Yeah. I think the, I think the, the advantage of Survey Monkey is that um, there's a Japanese interface. Yes. So um, it, when they're doing their own research in my, in my classes, I mm. use Survey Monkey. Mm. I know Google has one as well, Google Forms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think Survey, personally, I think Survey Monkey is, is, is more intuitive. Mm. And I've, I've gone through and created one with them. 
mm. to project to, and to show how easy it is. And then they've all answered that question. But I put the link in and then they've all answered the question and then they can see the results. Yeah. So then it gives them that step in when they do their own projects. Mm. So something as open as this question, you only need one question, the text open question, and they can type in and, and, and you get the results. So. Yeah, it's really nice simplicity. Yeah, it is. Good. Um, so I, I didn't see, um, uh, it says that it's, oh, I see, you got 100 responses hmm. by a survey monkey, and you mentioned that for the free version, they yeah. stop you at 100, right? They do. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And then you got 39 paper based surveys. And so you, you put all of that into Word, a Word document translated where necessary, and then you came up with five different categories. Yeah, it's it's a case of, uh, I, I think Chuki and I met for a data analysis meeting. And uh, it's a case of going through and you don't want it to be quantitative where you're going, okay, but you're looking for patterns in the data. Yeah. Then you're looking to, to make the category from, from the pattern. Does this fit into this this category? And if it doesn't, you refine it. Uh, until oh, did you, and just to be clear, did you start with five categories or did the categories emerge as you were? Yeah. 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 Can you uh, just briefly share what the categories are for people who've not read the paper? Go through them, yeah, right now. And um, um, at the very end, I was going to ask you a question about replicating this as a, as a, for teachers in other countries or, or teachers in Japan because it was so uh clean and simple in in all the best ways that i found myself thinking oh this would be great for uh uh researchers who would like to try something uh to actually go through and and uh replicate what you've done so andy is a busy boy typing in there and has the five in our our text chat the first one is requests or wants and then number two is positive negative feedback about the classes. Number three is comments on self-efficacy. Uh, number four is asking for advice as a learner. And then and number five is uh, nothing in particular. Um, no, you know, uh, no, no particular comments. So we're going to go through each one of these, looking at some examples of each. We okay? You with me? I am. So, okay. Okay, so the first one was called uh, requests and wants. So some students took this opportunity to say things that they wanted from Chuki and or Andy. Um, uh, how about I'm just gonna toss one out and you guys uh, unpack it a little bit, okay? Yeah. So uh, Chuki, the uh, desire for both of us to use more L1, the Japanese language yeah. in class, go ahead. Well, it was um, uh, some of my students puzzled and then they're too shy to ask like if they don't understand. So I guess that's that's what it is. And then they wanted to know like when is a test or what kind of a test. And then, yeah, they said the more um, the information, 100%, they, they, they were like 100% I want to know. Yeah, and I think that's a very clear distinction about, you know, it's I'm not asking you a question about something we did in class right now. I just want to know, you know, 100% when the assignments are due or what's, you know, what what's the 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 range of uh, things we have to cover for the test, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are sort of mechanics of the course, not not really content of the course. Really? Yeah. So, and then, Anything else on that, Andy? Well, I think, you know, obviously the difference between Chuki and myself and Chuki will agree or disagree with this, but I think she'll agree. The students are looking at Chuki going, why are you talking to me in English <laughs> for this? Whereas for me, there's an expectation that maybe he doesn't speak Japanese or maybe, right. um, or I think, I think that that's the case. Although I'm sure some of my students would like the fact that you know would like me to use more Japanese when I'm explaining important things. Yeah, sure. Yeah, great. Um, next one was uh, speak more slowly, Andy. Yeah. Um, 
Well, you get all of these requests about things that you're doing in the class as a teacher. So I think if we chunk those together as speaking too fast, speaking, speak more slowly, um, use more gestures, handwriting on the board, it's all comments about teacher behavior. Mm. Uh, what we, kind of comments on, on the board? What were they saying? Um, we can't read your writing. Yeah. yeah. See, because the, the thing is, because because Chuki and I shared the data with our classes, some of these comments might be about Chuki and some might be about myself. Mm. So, um, I often have to apologize to my students when I'm giving um, their assignments back and, and what I do these days, because my writing when I'm not only on the board, but when I'm giving feedback to students' essays, I realize that my writing has gotten worse over the years. <laughs> but what I do is give them the opportunity, okay, please read my comments and my corrections. And if you can't read my writing, please let me know and I'll tell you what it says. Yeah, sure. But um, you're, you're signaling that you care that they understand your comments. Exactly. Mm. So it's, it's interesting. I mean, I remember just going back many years ago, I remember when I, I did this business class one time and uh, I finished the first class with these students. And at the end of the class, they were, the, the leader of the class came up to me and went, we enjoyed your class very much, but next week, could you speak not like a teacher, but like a real person? <laughs> because we need to deal with business people and we want, I said, oh, okay, I can do that. So it can go the other way as well. Yeah. But they yeah. were much more, much, you know, adult learners, they're, they're in business, they know exactly what they want. So. Yeah. My favorite story is a couple of years after being in Japan, calling my mother and and just feeling her frustration building and finally she yelled at me why are you talking so slowly are you drunk <laughs> is that are you drunk and i said no i've just been in, you know, and i hadn't realized i had you know gone. i've had that same story from some of my coworkers especially sure. me during the speak they, they they go back to their own own place and then they yeah. go, uh That's are you okay yeah. what is happening yeah. <laughs> So another thing that people were requesting or asking about were like um, the, the classroom management and methodology points. Um, you can see some of those, Andy. Can you give me an example? Like uh, setting clear lesson goals, oh, uh, yeah. using yeah. students, um, pressuring overwhelming students. Any comments on those? I think that's yeah. for me. Chiki, do you want to take that one? So, no, it's, it's, uh, there are some some of my students I remember. Uh, you sounded a little bit intimidating sometimes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was really surprised actually because that is really unconscious. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really mean to intimidate them, but I guess I did. I was in a rush, or I don't remember. Obviously, yeah. but yeah. The one about the the one about the presentation, maximizing opportunities. I think we were talking just before about the way I set up poster presentations. Yeah. And they have like a, a revolving audience. Yeah. Now some of the students wanted to see all of the presentations, but the students are maybe going to repeat twice or three times. So you'll get you won't get to see everyone's presentation. And I think that was the comment. I think that was based on my my classroom management that it's just not practical in 90 minutes of, of the lesson for, for them to see everyone's presentation. Yeah. Um, I, I had a comment on, you've said here, looking around the class more when choosing a student to answer the question. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember reading some teachers teach to the right or teach to the left. Mm -hmm. And when I videoed my lesson as part of the master's program and realized yeah, I, I was ignoring the people on my right because I taught to the center and the left. And that's just the way I went in calling on students. And thankfully, that was, you know, in, in the first five years or so. And I, I've been very, you know, conscious to, to not do that anymore. So I guess I was wondering, did any of these surprise you in terms of, wow, I hadn't uh, thought of that or that I, I didn't expect that kind of comment or were, were they all pretty much what you expected? Chuki? My intimidated 
Yeah. Wounded. That was really shocking, actually. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I, I've been very careful. Yeah. To do that. <laughs> Probably mother of me came out or. Yeah, um, sure. You're barking, sometimes barking at yeah, them. You know. I yeah. don't do that well. Yeah. But especially when I ask questions, they say, mm. yeah, you sounded a little bit intimidating. You know? Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> Did you get a chance to investigate like some of these comments? Because sometimes we don't know why, what students are intimidated about or because, um, you know, this, I used to get this feedback and have to pass it on to teachers. But before I pass it on to teachers, I want to know, well, what were they intimidated by kind of thing? And is yeah. it to do with just their feelings because they were felt on the spot or is it? you know, some other behavior that we can do something about. Yeah, mm. that would be the next stage, I think. The, the, final, the final part of these requests, this, this is, you know, data section one, these requests and wants, was them asking things that you couldn't do much about. Uh, for example, better level checks or placement testing yeah. stuff or more graded readers um, in the program or things like that. But what, what, what did you, what were you able to do with any of that information? Well, I think what we suggest in, in the paper is, you know, whether you're a part, I mean, I'm on the committee, so I can bring these points up. But if you're a part-time teacher, then talking to the full-timers and saying, you know, these are the guests of the students, or, you know, maybe even encouraging the stu- students to, to, Talk bring this up to the with the full timers absolutely absolutely to the library and, and say can we have yeah. some more readers yeah it's a whole information is power yeah yeah so let's move on to number two which is positive and negative feedback um so Chuki, some of the positive feedback you saw it was fun or uh, um some of them i remember I didn't like English or I was really afraid of speaking English, but I got to like or I feel familiar with um, communicating with others in English for the first time. Yeah. So that, was- oh, that makes your day, doesn't it? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. Because I guess in a secondary school, especially high school, they're yeah. really focusing on the entrance exam. And then yeah. they've been like learning lots of vocabularies, memorizing, memorizing. And then for the first time in their life, maybe. And since probably an elementary school, you know, in elementary school, you're going to play, uh, as you know, you're going to yeah. play lots of activities and fun. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you got into a junior high, <gasps> tests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that is that kind of liberating yeah. voice from students. Yeah, finally, yeah, I got yeah. one again. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that, uh, and I've done it, I've noticed it this year just because in one of my speaking classes, we're doing lots of things like who was a favorite teacher, who do you respect, uh, who are you close to in your family, things like that. And as people brought up things that I overheard as I was kind of zooming in for, for listening or feedback, I always took a moment to say, I want you to go home and tell your mother what <laughs> you said in class today, because if I heard any of these things, I would be so happy. Yeah. Or I said, go home and, and find the email address of your grade five teacher and tell him the impact he had on your life because you know I'm almost you know uh, feeling emotional hearing the impact they had and I just know the teachers would go crazy to hear that kind of good stuff I see the students reacting going oh yeah yeah that makes sense I'm gonna maybe do that Yeah. yeah yeah I, I think you'll be surprised most of the teacher if you ask the question like yep. who is inspired who is inspiration for you or yep. inspired you and then lots of lots of students say one of the teachers. Absolutely. Huge, huge impact on students. Yeah. Life. Yeah. So let's move into the negative feedback. Um, Andy, while you're sitting over there, I saw you scanning ahead. I was scanning <laughs> ahead. Yeah. So go ahead, what do you got? Well, I, you know, I, I think students took the opportunity to, to talk about, you know, the class is difficult or yeah. um, I, I don't feel I can answer questions or Chuki looks intimidating. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I, and I, I think what we say in the paper is 
don't take the negative feedback. Uh, you know, don't think, right, I'm going to quit teaching. I, I yeah, don't teach. take it personally. Don't, yeah, yeah. Just, just use it as a springboard because what you're, you're in a position then to think, well, okay, my students are finding the class difficult. What can I do to make it easier for them? Or who is finding it difficult? Um, how can I encourage a question, uh, answering questions in class? Yeah. What alternative approaches can I make? Yeah. Um, because I've got Facebook groups. One one time, I used to do these like races on Facebook. So I'm gonna. They were learning vocabulary for IELTS, and I'm gonna put the definition in in the Facebook group. And the first person to comment what the word is, they get a point. Yeah. They're all going mental on the on on the smartphones, going, ah, "Gotta type it in, gotta type it in." Um, and uh, so just finding alternative ways. To get, you know, if I'd done that as a, as a question, okay, who knows the answer? Maybe they would have all been quiet. But because I turned it into a game yeah. using Facebook, then suddenly everyone, everyone's involved. Uh, and then there's a permanent record in our group of that, that game if they want to go back and look again. Yeah. So it's finding, looking at these issues or puzzles and thinking, well, what can I do about it? And we quote Anne Burns in Action Research as you know, yeah. the starting cycle. Hmm. Cool. Um, number three was comments on self-efficacy. And uh, before the session, I had asked Chiyuki about this, and uh, I heard the tragic story that uh, this this con this wasn't accepted. Which I'm gonna. I told her I might I may uh, discuss during the opening ceremonies of the <laughs> national conference this year, wondering oh, yeah. how how an abstract talking about self-efficacy and learner agency and, and autonomy and motivation, you know, uh, didn't make it into the, to the top tier. It, it shocks me. So do you want to read, Andy, do you have it there? The, the definition of self-efficacy. So I think I should let Chiyuki do this because Chiyuki, she's... Do you want to? You're the, you're the yeah. self-efficacy lady. Well, Bandura says self-efficacy is perceived judgment of uh, one's own capacity to perform a certain task successfully. So mm -hmm. it's a certain task. So um, speaking English or language learning is one of the tasks. It doesn't mean they have um, very low self-efficacy -eff in a different field, but in terms of language learning, we are talking about. So they might be great at cooking, for example, sure. and have or, uh, a very yeah. high level of self-efficacy. Yeah. I, I know I can do anything that's necessary to make this wonderful meal. Yeah. And so they have high self-efficacy, but in language learning, they, they have low self-efficacy. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were lots of examples of that, um, yeah. which you quoted here. I'm not good at English. I can't say what I want to say in English. I'm not good at listening. I don't understand the key vocabulary, or this class is too difficult. Those are all great examples of low self-efficacy, aren't they? Or even language anxiety. Language anxiety, absolutely. Yeah, the case, yeah. Yeah. Self-efficacy, yeah, lower. And so, how do you guys deal with that? So, that's not surprising to any of us, but what are some of the techniques to our new teachers in the audience it's providing opportunities for language success. And when a student is overly nervous, knowing what to say to the student, because like I had a student today who came up to me and said, I'm worried about my score because I'm not good at presenting. So I said, well, let's look at the course. There's a writing, there's three writing components, there's uh, two speaking components, and your writing is stronger than your, your speaking. So I wouldn't worry about your score because you're going to do really well on, on, on your writing. And the more you practice, the better you will get. So I can have that one-on-one -on -one chat. Yeah. But it's also, you know, creating moments of success. Yeah. You know, in the class, it's not always possible. And, and Yeah. Okay. But, I also um, put the students in a pair because it's Japan and... Japanese students are not really good at sharing their opinions in the whole class. Yeah. They are really good at, you know, talking like a kind of private chat. And so in a, in a pair first, they're going to talk about it. Oh, my opinion is correct. So yeah. I'm right. And then, then they are more confident to share. And then little yeah. by little. Yeah. 
I have four students sitting at a desk, so they'll go side by side pairs. And if I see, I'm just watching. And if I see that it looks successful enough, then I'm going to say, okay, now do it, you know, across the table with the same group and, or do it in the group of four. And then maybe at the end, just give the option to anybody. Does anybody want to share it? And maybe somebody does, maybe somebody doesn't. Yeah. So it's, as you, it's in, it's in step by step levels. Yeah. And it's reinforcing that mistakes are positive. And I think they've gone through a system where, you know, there's someone in the cl class going wrong <laughs> with a ruler or something. So, uh, you know, it's just changing, changing the atmosphere where <laughs> yeah. you've got to fall off the bike to be a couple of times before you can ride it. Yeah. Um, uh, the, Talk about a friendly classroom atmosphere. Is that important or not important? Absolutely vital. Oh, yeah. Vital. How do you, how do you, uh, what are some examples of how are you friendly in class? Know your students, know their names, know if they've changed their hair color, have a joke about it. I had a student on Monday who changed his hair gray, and I said, no, no, I'm supposed to be the gray one. I have jokes with the students that they understand, and yeah. You know, it's 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 about building rapport yeah mm. and that comes naturally for you hey andy um well i was a bartender no ah, there you so go seven years bartender mm -hmm. so that, that's what you gotta do now i'm curious with chiyuki as the as the japanese teacher um do 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 you ever feel any resistance to you being natural and friendly versus being the the image of the strict Japanese teacher. How do you deal no, with that? Not at all. Just because I didn't like the strict Japanese teachers. Yeah. Uh, they are not like my role models. Yeah. I don't want to be like them. So sometimes like outside of the classroom, I just step out and then start chatting a little bit in Japanese. Sure. With the students. And it's really quick and an immediate rapport I can make. Like, yeah, you know, this this joke or something. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it makes so much difference. And then, as as soon as I got into the classroom, I go cold switch, and then they go, oh, oh, you don't speak Japanese anymore. And then I'm like, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is like let's switch the code. And then now English world. Yeah, and, absolutely. Hmm. Okay, let's move on to number four. We're running out of time here. I'm watching the clock and we're on number four. Our timing is okay right now. Number four is asking for advice. So students wrote a bunch of questions and we're going to play a little game here where you each have to put your hand up and we're going to see who scores uh, better, better points, okay? And uh, maybe the audience, you can point at Chiuki or point at Andy, which, an which question you like better or which answer you like better, okay? So here's a student asking for advice and Andy and Chiuki, put your hand up if you want to answer it, okay? Um, how can I not be nervous? Let's go, let's go. Come on, hand up. How Hi, Chiuki. Just, just try, even if you're nervous, like try to talk. Get over it. <laughs> Okay, Andy, anything? Um, imagine the audience naked. No. Um, <laughs> actually, I was. Imagine your pumpkin. <laughs> no, actually, I was doing an IELTS test with the students the other day, and one of them said, The way I stopped being nervous, my parents told me to imagine that the audience are vegetables. <laughs> so it was amazing. So. Um, I often talk about the first presentation I had. Yeah. It was awful. And then I can actually show them. Yeah. It's a really awful presentation and they can laugh at me. Sure. But I was really, really nervous. But yeah. the next time I get better and I'm better and I'm better. That's how oh, you. Too, too wonderful. I, I am pointing, pointing it. <laughs> That was wonderful in terms of that self-deprecating humor, like making jokes about yourself yeah, or, yeah. Or, or sharing your, your, your own struggles. Um, the, the, the interesting one I think I saw in a TED Talk recently was talking about how uh, I'm nervous versus I'm excited. Wow. Actually, exactly the same thing happening inside your body physiologically. Wow. And so by telling students that, 
that the I'm nervous is a downer, I'm excited is, a, is an up feeling. So I see students understanding it immediately and they'll go, oh, okay, I'm excited, I'm excited. And I go, yeah, that feels better to say you're excited than to say you're nervous. Okay. Yeah, both inclu- involve an adrenaline rush, right? Exactly. They're both, both tied. So it's teaching them to handle the adrenaline. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what can I do to improve my speaking skills? Hands up. Speak. Who's got it? Hi, Chuki. Speak more. Speak more. <laughs> absolutely. Just speak, speak, speak. Yeah. That just makes perfect. That's all. Yeah. You're in the teacher's room with Hoda Sensei. There you go. Yeah, come in and talk with us. No, I often tell my students to go to the English lounge at our school. And yep. uh, the, we have uh, interns and teachers who will interact. Mm-hmm. So the students can gain confidence. Yeah. And it's like, it's like talking to a stranger. The first time is the most difficult, and then it gets easier as soon as you connect, right? And sometimes there are lots of exchange students nowadays at the university. Why yep. don't you just exchange the language, you know? I sure. always say that. You can yep. teach them Japanese and then you can learn English and then that would be a really amazing, you know, yep. Yep. friendship or relationship. Mm. So let's move into the last one with looking at the timing here. It says nothing in particular. So you say that out of 139 responses, you got 50 students who said, in Japanese, toku ni arimasen, meaning nothing in particular. And you've looked at some different um, reasons for that. Um, And I also just, I penciled in my own questions about um, any sense that they were tired. Well, I mean, where, where you didn't really rank these, you just kind of tossed out different reasons why. But let's start with what's your first reason why you think people said, that many people said nothing special? I thought it was apathy. Like, I don't yeah. Apathy. Yeah. Mendoxai. Mendoxai, yeah. Um, so I, I said something about some, a, a certain number of students may have already given up. You know, and therefore that's when mendoxai, mendoxai just means, oh, it's a hassle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a hassle for me to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, A little bit, does it matter, that kind of attitude? Did you feel like, uh, are there any trust issues with any of those groups you had that they didn't quite trust you to do this? Mm. Anything on that? Could be. Andy, not really, or no, yes, no, because really, because um, I I knew the students quite well, so yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's a trust issue. Yeah, the classes, the classes that I taught, I did this with, I've been teaching them for quite a while. Yeah, so probably from my students. Yeah, one class or repeaters class, mm-hmm. and they are third and fourth graders, and they are like you know. Uh, really, they really have to pass this course. Yeah. And it's a point test taking course. Yeah. Yeah. So most of the students, like, well, drugged <laughs> themselves in the classroom. They don't like English at all. They don't like this class at all. So I tried every single thing, but it was a little bit difficult. But half of the class is like, oh, please, just, just do it and let us go. That kind of attitude. Yeah. So these are third and fourth year university students? Yes. Right. Just to check. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get a sense that um, sometimes I feel like there are problems that might be a little bit systemic. Uh, when I see my students having to deal with 15 different classes a week and, you know, they're being pulled in 15 different ways and that they just are reacting most of the time. They're not being very proactive. Um, or they're they're just focused on what they absolutely have to do, and this might not fit into that list. I don't know. Just that's why we try to make it like the bite size. Yeah. So that it's it's not one of these like thirty page surveys. <laughs> right. Just, here's questions. one question, and you can answer it however you want to. Yeah. But I mean, you know, with that freedom comes great responsibility. Yes. And uh, it's easy to go, ah, nothing. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm really curious to, to see somebody else report back to us on doing this, because I don't really know, is 50 out of 139, is that a, is that a large percentage? Is that average? Is it low? I, I just have no sense of it until we this did it a few more say, times. This is why we say, you know, further research is needed. And maybe by doing this on a more regular basis, Yep. We begin, oh, well, actually, maybe this teacher is interested in what I say, and I do have this platform for communication, so it would be interesting. Yeah, and that's kind of where I wanted to close up with this, is that um, if anybody in the audience would like to, myself included, maybe replicate this kind of study, are there any things, um, any uh, be careful about, or any, anything that you uh, learned looking back on it? Anything, Chiyuki? And Sabe Monkey is great, but like uh, we said before, the free one is like up to 100. And then I was thinking like maybe we should pay because there are more students there and yep. really like to listen to their voice, not yep. only our students, but also our colleagues. And that would be really great um, yep. collaborative um, research if you can do like a three or four of you yeah. at work and then, then do the same survey and then compare or more and more data. Yeah, and I think if it's only that one question, the Google form could be just as effective. Mm. I mean, if you're yeah. doing this, if you're actually, if you're doing this for your own reflective purpose, yeah. does, you, we tend not to have a hundred students in the class. Right. So you could actually set an individual survey monkey for each each class. Yeah, sure. The same sure. question. So, you know, it, you, there's ways of getting around the hundred responses. Yeah. If I've got a class of thirty, I could make you know like a a K nine sure. survey monkey or a you know yeah. third year whatever, you know the names yeah. of the classes and and that would be one way around it. Would you, in, in terms of you just had this one question, I'm curious, would you like to know, um, you can ask the students what year are you, or you can ask their gender, would you have been interested to see any differences in those, or it's not, does that conflict with the purpose of what you were trying to do? Well, actually, in reality, we did have some other questions we had, but just because Chiyuki and I were doing this, we needed to know I think we need to know which university. Sure, sure. So they had a check. Yeah. So there, there was there was like some very simple yeah. one check question. I don't know if we did gender. Um, we but, didn't. We didn't. But um, year. What year? Yeah, what, what year? year? What year are you in? And and what yeah. what was your year? Uh, certainly, first year students are totally in a different headspace than yeah. third year. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Something, right? But I mean, if you wanted to do it, as I said, for reflective practice, you would have a, a, a class specific one. Yeah. But it would be anonymous. Yeah, sure, sure. Hmm. Wow. It's completely anonymous because we yeah. don't. Well, I just, uh, I wanted to say that it was, um, it was so easy to follow. I love the organization of the, the article. Um, I love the, I felt like I was listening to two teachers. Oh. I sometimes get a little lost in, in some of the academic papers that um, I wonder who they're writing to, but I really, teacher voice really came through to me and I really appreciated. And I kind of got inspired by the, uh, the activity itself. So the, I can just uh, give a plug for modern English, English teacher. The aim of that journal is to have much more practical yeah. papers in there. The, yeah. the only downside is it's not a three journal. So right. even if you can persuade your library to get it, um, I, I get an electronic version from my library. Oh. You have no idea what that costs, do you? Or? Uh, I've sent a link at the top of the chat to the website. Okay. I, I, I think personal ones are, it's in English pounds. Just let me have a look. I've got the website here. I'm going to just drop this link down at the bottom again for everybody, just to... Just a quick question to both of you while Andy's doing that. Did you, uh, did you think about or have you already shared uh, the results with the students who participated in the survey? Okay. Um, I was just, just wondering, because one of the things that I found from the survey monkeys I did during, with my students was that 
I would print off like the data and some of the charts and so on. And I'd take them to class and get them to look at it and just see what conversations they would have afterwards. And that would be really interesting too, because yeah. then they'd interact with their own stuff. And then maybe a bit later, then we can talk about, okay, so what do you think we should focus on and what can we do about this class and so on? Mm -hmm. uh, and I did that for a, a new course I was teaching on fluency and asking them about different fluency activities and how they're responding them. So it wasn't one question, but mm -hmm. it was having that cycle that yeah. for the first time where I actually put the results back to them, mm -hmm. then created something else that I thought was of value. Yeah, that sounds really good, yeah. Yeah. And also nothing in particular, like the reasons. Right. What the real reason I really wanted to know, like why did they say nothing in particular? We just assume yeah. there are some reasons, but yeah sometimes it's just they're they're okay i don't know students have that in in japan right it's like mm, talking you know yeah, talking really okay, right yeah. so well light-hearted one or right you know, so. <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> well i can't tell you <laughs> thank you very much andy for calculating that for us no Both worries and about, if you want just the electronic subscription where you, and that will get you the new issue yep right away uh, and you can print articles off to read on your iPad or what have you. It's about 4,300 yen a year. Yeah. Then okay. there's the library subscriptions as well. Yeah, good, good. And have you published with them a few times? About 15, maybe. There you go. They yeah. like you. There you go. <laughs> we like you too. Thank you. Well, let's wrap up there. Thank you uh, very much, both of you. That was uh, a breeze uh, on my end. It was fascinating and interesting and uh, fun. So thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So I'm going to, with that, I'll say... Um, Any uh, other questions from um, anyone else? Just give them a chance. Yeah. No, we're okay. Anne's okay. It's... Uh, Tokuni <laughs> nai. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, uh, did you want to uh, tell anybody about Saturdays, Phil? You mentioned this to me the other day that we never wrap up properly. <laughs> well, I was, it wouldn't go that far. Uh, yeah, so I'll, um, we've got someone else here from ITDIT, so it might be Bob. Just, uh, yeah, on Saturday. When's the next one? 27th will be, will be in the teacher's room. Okay. Um, Saturday morning, as usual, we'll be exploring learning from our learners. Um, so carrying on with this topic, but sharing different ways in which we can learn from our learners or might wish to learn from our learners. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and then the day before that, we'll be doing a Facebook Live as well with a monthly roundup and talking about uh, TESOL certificates online as well. Good, good. And there we go. All righty. With that, I'm going to wrap up the recording. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.